good day. Um, this video is about fitting a flint correctly to a flint lock. Now I have made a video of this before but I'm going to add a little bit more into this one. Um, it's an update if you like. Um, so uh, okay without any further ado we'll um, we'll start on the on the video. Okay this is uh, the lock on my flintlock fusel. It's a fairly big lock um, but I don't consider it a high quality lock. Um, it has been the hammer has been sparking well. Um, I had to retemper it a couple of times um, but I'm still not satisfied with it and it occurred to me that using a smaller flint might be beneficial um, of course it could be that the smaller flint will um, will shatter um, with the heavier the heavier lock um, but we'll we'll see anyway the first thing to do is to pull the cock back to half cock. Now do make sure when you're doing this that the gun is unloaded. Okay, if you want to make sure it's unloaded, it's easy enough to get the ramrod and place the ramrod alongside the barrel with the end of it just past the vent. Okay? just past the vent. You can either mark the ramrod at the muzzle or you can hold your finger there so you know how long that how long that is, what the distance is from there to there. Okay? Now if you put the ramrod down inside the barrel and your mark does not meet the muzzle, it doesn't reach the muzzle then you've got a load in there, okay? And you need to be very careful. Now you can put a vent quill in there, um, just a piece of a vent quill, just cut off the end, and um, that will block the vent. But of course, you're going to have to make sure that the barrel is is uh, the muzzle is facing in a safe direction. Um, you could pull the load if you wanted to, um, but it's generally speaking, if you're out in the field and you want to change the flint, you will probably leave it loaded. Um, so just, just be aware of the fact that you could cause a spark while doing this, and a spark could get through the vent, and it could fire the gun. So do take care. This gun today is not loaded. Um, so it's perfectly safe but anyway I would still keep the muzzle pointing in a safe direction okay uh, I want to change out this flint this is a fairly large flint and one thing I might you might note here is the turn screw okay now you can see I filed the end of this turn screw because it didn't fit the screw properly. Now if it doesn't fit the screw properly you've got too much of, a, of an angle on this tip of the turn screw then it will tend to slide out and when it does that it damages the screw. So do make sure that your screwed, your, your um, your uh, turn screw actually fits the screw, okay? Goes well down inside the slot, like so, and then we'll just undo it, okay? I'm using leather in the cock. You can use um, sheet lead, um, some people prefer to use sheet lead. Um, they even leave it a bit wider and they wrap the lead around the flint. They actually put it on the flint 
and then put the whole thing into the cock jaws. Um, I prefer to use leather, it's just one of those things. Um, yeah, but if you do have a problem with sparking uh, on the hammer, well then that's something else you could try. You could try using uh, using sheet lead in here in, in the jaws instead of leather. Okay, we've taken the large one out, and I'm going to put a smaller one in. Um, my reasoning here is that. There is less area across the flint. It's going to hit well inside. And I just think that that may make it spark better than it is at the moment. Okay. Now the shoulder on this one, I'm going to put on top. Okay. I'm going to put this shoulder on the top. That will make it strike lower on the hammer. Okay, um, if I return it round, then of course it's going to it's going to strike higher. This will strike lower. Okay, now having got it in there, we're just going to pinch it up a little bit. Not too much, just so it moves. Okay, close the hammer down over the pan. Now you can release the cock. Now you need to make sure that it's not only hitting about two thirds up the hammer, but also it's it's centered. Okay, so in this case I'm gonna to have to move this one across a bit. Okay, that looks about good. Looks about right. Okay, then I let the pressure push against the hammer and that straightens the flint. Okay, that makes sure that edge is touching all the way across the hammer or the steel. Hammer or steel is, you can call it whichever you like. Okay, now we pinch it up. Okay, firm. Okay, there we go. Make sure it's still aligned properly, which it is. Okay. Now, if you're going to try it, of course, at this point, you know you're going to create sparks. So this is why I said make sure that it isn't loaded. The fact that you don't have any powder in the pan makes no difference a spark can easily get through the vent and set off the main charge. So like I said, either put a piece of vent quill in there to block it off or uh, or unload the gun, one or the other. Okay, and make sure it's pointing in a safe direction. Okay, now that was, that was an easy task. We'll close it down. We'll pull it back to half cock and we'll try it. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Good big hot sparks. That's what I like to see. Okay, um, just another word on the, the vent quill. They, they're good to use um, when you're loading. It stops the gunpowder getting into the vent and what happens if it gets into the vent is that the flame the fire then has to burn its way through the vent now I know this, this doesn't sound like it's much but it's it's a time delay okay you know some people say that flint locks are very slow it's a matter of pull the trigger you know clack flash bang it actually that is not true okay if you do it properly and and you your lock is properly tuned your flint is in line and you make sure that that vent is clear if you don't use a vent quill then use a use a pricker and just 
clear the vent with the pricker after you've loaded and you'll find that the ignition will be much faster okay uh, another use for vent quills when it's loaded and you put it aside okay um, you will empty the empty the pan obviously um, <coughs> excuse me and there'll be no way of telling whether that gun's loaded or not if you forget or somebody else picks it up but if you put a vent quill in there a full length vent quill it sticks out can easily be seen and that is a signal to anyone that that gun is loaded okay so vent quills are a good thing to carry with you um, I have some on the strap of my um, strap of my shot pouch okay I think that's about all um, I think we can maybe move it back a little bit and I can show you this little pouch that's attached to the trigger guard now the idea of this little pouch is that if I have to strip the gun down in the field to clean it the pins and the screws go into this little pouch and that way I can't lose it. It is just so easy to drop a pin into the dirt or the grass in camp and, and lose it and you don't want to do that so when you pull a gun apart for cleaning um, just put all the parts in the little bag you don't have to tie it to the trigger guard you can keep it in your shot pouch if you want I find it easier just to keep on the trigger guard and I know where it is it's there all the time um, and it works very well okay um, I think that's about all um, just to uh, reiterate about the the uh, the turn screw make sure it fits the screw okay do not damage the screw otherwise you're going to have problems later on as it gets worn okay thanks for watching um, and that's all for this video